Welcome to another edition of Living Simply and Fun. Today we'll be reviewing the Paul Stulax right there. You should see it crystal clear. Paul Stulax Ghost. Ghost. For all of you out there, welcome. We got shipment one of our cigars in and we will be reviewing it. So, tell me good fellow. Tell me good. What's uh, everything in the no. ingredients of this? The Paul Stulak Ghost cigar. comes in one size, a 6x58. In two versions, a Maduro and a Habano. The Habano is an Ecuadorian Habano wrapper. This one is a Brazilian Maduro, probably Matafina, because it doesn't have the raised bumps that you usually find on an Aeroparasa. Uh, it also is filled with Nicaraguan long filler and a secretive binder. First thing I'll say about this is that the wrapping job is not all that good. There's lots of veins in here. There's a few splits where the glue didn't hold down along the lines. Uh, another thing I've noticed here is that the band is essentially glued to the cigar, and I'm going to have to peel this off just to be able to smoke it. Um, you were able to slip yours off. That's good. Mine are both very firmly on there, and I'm trying not to tear it because I like to collect the bands. Alright, there we go. Very tight on here. Um, it kind of has a construction paper feel to the band, which, by the way, is a very interesting picture. It's got a skull with a cross in it, and angel wings, and it looks like chains going across a shield with an S on it. Uh, very interesting looking. Uh, another thing that I noticed is when I was this the has cast, plenty of veins. If you could see that right in the light, there's a lot of yeah, as I said, a it's lot of a veins. Very pretty looking cigar. Right there, the uh, seams, the veins, etc. Also, not when I was cutting the cigar, it's got a very, very soft, squishy feel to it, and the wrapper actually feels very alive, like. This just came out of the factory and hadn't even finished drying yet. I'm afraid that this is going to need uh, dry boxing, a lot of dry boxing, and then it's probably over humidified. But uh, we'll find out. We'll find These cigars we picked up that famous smoke shop. Yes, uh, they had a nice sampler with three different uh, Paul Stulax in there, and there was two of each. Uh, this is also sometimes known as like the original Phantasma or something. Not to be confused with the phantasm, and it does say ghost on the band. I would like to state, uh, just for the record, since we're doing this wonderful video for you all, I would like you to ring in, and this is my question for you today, while we're doing this review. Since a lot of people use the Devil Sight cigar bin, has anyone used Cigar Auctioneer, and how was it, since Cigar Auctioneer is owned by Famous Float Shop? Um, That'd be a good question. That is a good question. Uh, to get back to the Paul Stulak here, a uh, little story behind him. Uh, he was living in Vancouver, not too far from us. And, yeah. uh, Washington he, or Canada? I don't know. It just says Vancouver on his site. Because uh, he does a video in which he talks about his background. And it's a very good video. So if you get a chance, go and look at Paul Stulak's website. And look at his video on about his company and stuff, uh, the about me or whatever. Uh, he essentially ended up going from Vancouver back to his home in Halifax, where he opened up the cigar that shop. That would mean Vancouver, British Columbia. It Halifax, was really more, of, yes, uh, it was more of a cigar uh, uh, stand, and he built it up to a cigar shop, which is still there today. And uh, he went down to Miami and started blending with uh, a guy down there, I believe his name is uh, Guillermo Pina, and they've come up with the Paul Stulak band uh, blend. And all of his blends have unique names to them, and I really like the ideas behind his blends, uh, the names at least. Um, but I will say that this is kind of an ugly looking stick. Um, so, uh, yes, but just anyway, remember to you all... Uh, cigars are hit and miss. We won't know if this is going to be a hit or a miss, but we will review this and let you know. And by the way, for some of you out there, since he's doing the sim test, I'd like to make one little statement today. Now, 
For all of you out there, you all know that one of my favorite cigars is the Romeo and Juliet Anniversary, which I love, and I'm going to get a box maybe sometime this year at 242 bucks. But, my all-time favorite cigars right now on my cigar list, which I will be putting out for all-time cigar list for 2016 when we roll into 2017, the video me and Aaron's putting together, is the Isabella. Now, uh, a certain somebody out there basically uh, butchered it. And the, we thought so because he dropped all the all of the spice in there and basically said there was no spice to it. And yet I, I was noticing pepper flavors left and right. And then he beautiful lamb, peppers. Then he lambasted with Isabella's website. And then so. he basically blew apart their website. And not only that, he called them a flavored cigar even though it was... Uh, and he had to have had the information, because I know I did, that they're triple wrapped with uh, old... Uh, old world stuff, exactly. Problem is... It was an old recipe for a sugar-based glue that's not a vegetable-based glue. Now, check He's out... He's just not used to it. That is not a flavored cigar. So Sorry, it's not a flavored tip either. So check out our review of the Isabella cigars in our uh, cigar lineup. Watch him. Give us your opinion on it, because, and then uh, go look for the Isabel Circus. Sorry, we had to rant there, but we kind of felt that that video did no good to Isabella Cigars. Exactly, so. Especially since that was so good, and he basically was treating it like a ho-hum cigar. Exactly. But, I mean, so. it was still a decent review, it's just he totally ignored the flavor profiles of it, and uh, he wanted to call it a, a sweet, uh, a flavored cigar when it wasn't, and, uh... He made such a big deal out of the different wrappers, too. Anyways, let's get on to this. Now, I'm picking up kind of a hay oak, but very mild. And more of an oak flavor off the, uh, scent off the foot. Very mild scents, though. I'm picking up a pure hay scent with a little bit of uh, barley and hops. Which, by the way, today I will be sampling a beer to go with this. I won't know how the beer is, but the wine last night I had, a Pinot Grigio, was very good. The red wine, the apartment manager gave us some wine, wasn't that tasty, so. But at least the wine didn't expire like the manager, uh, I mean, like the manager heard when our neighbor basically decided to pass off a frozen chicken since she didn't know how to cook it, and it turns out it was frozen for eight years. Well... Anyways, the dry puff on this comes off as very, very floral, um, with kind of some oak flavors in the dry puff. Uh, I really like the floral notes I'm picking up on it. Now. This tastes like you're sniffing roses. Uh, that's what it's I'm kind thinking. of a candyish rose. Kind of like no. uh, Smarties or something. Shall we light the fire? Yeah, this, this is very much like light the fires. This, big this is very like, much like eating Smarties inside a flower shop. But what? yeah, time to fire this up. up. I gotta say, I like that flavor. Smarties in a flower shop. I do want to say we apologize for our one video that was forty-one minutes long. Uh, sometimes we get carried away, but there are other reviewers out there that sit and do an hour and a half, two hour review because they smoke the whole cigar in the video. And, you know, I've thought about doing that before too. And it gives you a chance to say what you've noticed as a change here and there. Mmm. This tastes. Like a Snickers bar. First hit, just a pure Snickers bar. Interesting, I don't pick up any chocolate in it, though. It's nutty, kind of caramelly. Caramel is in a Snickers bar. Yes, but no chocolate. It's also it's like got a Snickers bar pepper. without the chocolate. It tastes like they put in a little Lajero in the first third of this cigar. There, there's so definitely that. a little puff there that's, uh, I guess, some spice in it. Very, uh, still a lot of oak flavor to me, too. Now, I haven't picked up any of that fl floral flavor that I got off the dry puff. This is... Uh, just asking, Aaron, for our reviewers out there, who, uh, I know you said this is uh, Paul Stulak's, but who blends it? Paul Stulak. Miami, a cigar company. Paul Stulak. 
So basically, they don't go through general or something. Uh, nope. He blends his own. Uh, half of the cigars are actually rolled in Esteli, Nicaragua, and the other half are rolled in Miami, where his company's based. And I assume you said he's dead or something? Or no, something he's going. not dead. He's very much alive. <laughs> he's also a rather young guy. Uh, from the looks of it, I'd say he's between 20 and 30 right now. Uh, so he he should be blending for a long time. Here he should have his own cigar line. He can blend his own, too. I would love my own cigar line, too. So Very expensive, though, too. Someone must know. How do you get into it? That'd be a good question. Good question. With uh, not a proper good answer either. Because there's many Sorry, factors. I don't have an answer to that. First of all, I suppose I'd need a factory, wouldn't I? I'd also have to have tobacco farms or at least buy tobacco from tobacco See, I, when I did this, being with no depth perception, I did cause that. Yeah, yeah. I kind of got the same type of thing. Oh, well, there you it's go. It's not just you. Okay. So. And I don't have the depth perception problem. So far, I'm picking up hints of oats, too. Creamy butteriness as well in the stick. Oak and cedar. Uh, how about that one guy from that video? Butternut squash. Look and kale. <laughs> there, is, there is some vegetable flavor in this, but I'm getting mostly oak and yeah, cedar. Yeah, I can pick up a light taste of celery. So. And maybe some caramelish flavor. Yeah, something fibrous. Uh, a fibrous vegetable like celery. Yeah. Celery's about right. It's got that cellular celery flavor too, so very smoky. It kind of leaves a leathery taste on the lips. It seems like it's got a good long finish. It's a little soft and squishy, though. I still don't like that much. Well, I suppose we should get into the first half and let you know how this So, to so some of you out there, before we turn it off and go to the first half, I want to say, uh, please look for reviews coming up from me of the uh, Placer. As well as Placeris, as well as the Romeo Juliet House of Capulets anniversary. Next month, I will get the Montague anniversary. I also got you got the, five Laurors coming. You got five La Bamba or uh, six O ones to do. Uh, you got three Paul Stulaks. This is the first of the three. Uh, I'm just talking about now. my shit. I know, man. I know. But heck, you have five Laurors, and then there's that one I can't remember the name of. Now, don't worry about it. Right here. One box of Romeo and Juliet Capulets. One box of uh, Carino, or one uh, five pack of Carino. Carinos. One Laurora Factory Robusto sampler. Did yeah. they have any other factories or was it just no. Robustos? And finally, uh, one. Placeris Canister Gordo 6x60. The main one that I was trying to remember was the Carinos. Now that said, everyone, please uh, wait for it. Yeah, we'll see you at uh, the halfway point of this. Yes, thank Enjoy you. Enjoy every puff to that point. Yes. Hello, welcome back to the halfway point of this Paul Stulak Ghost. So far, the squishiness has not been a problem. The soft outer wrapper, very soft. Um, just no problem. Great finish on this cigar. Uh, not a lot of flavors to write home about. It's uh, it kind of just, it's just very relaxing. Uh, and the flavors kind of just drift through. Uh, but it's kind of on the oakish cedar front. Uh, slight floral notes, little sweetness to it. Looks like you let yours go out, maybe. And I left it sit there. I didn't let it go out. I had a light tunnel. So Lots over of smoke. I three minor fixes, but anyways. Some cocoa flavor. A little bit of sweetness to it. 
but mostly oak and cedar with some cocoa. Really enjoying the cigars at this point. It's the spot. Cedar, cocoa, little, uh, I'd say, wheat, hay, and uh, barley. And maybe a little toasted nuts and light pepper. Yeah, so, at this point, really enjoying it. Um, My so opinion so far, this cigar is, uh, even at the halfway point, it is a complex bomb of various flavors. Yeah, even though I said that they don't stand out, doesn't mean it's not complex. There's a lot of flavor change in here. It's just very pleasing, and I can sit back and relax with this. I think I can end up having this as a daily smoke, honestly. At $9 uh, a stick. At $9 a stick, though, I can forget that as a daily smoke, but doesn't mean that it's not worth the money. Anyways. One question for you on this halfway point to our subscribers out there, anyone who comes across this video and walks at this link so far and got this far, has anyone shopped at Cigar Federation? And if so, how was the service? Oh, just ask on C2. They're constantly posting pictures of their uh, uh, butters, and uh, that seems to be the big one sells. Uh, remember the Lost and Found cigars? Mm -hmm. uh, they're pretty popular, and I think the only place to get those really is Cigar Federation, so they're obviously buying some from there. Alright, well, stay tuned for the final third. Thank you. Welcome back to the final third of this uh, Paul Stulax. Stulax. Ghost. Ghost. Uh, still very woodsy notes, primarily oak and cedar, little cocoa, some sweetness, uh, a mix of other flavors, a little leather on the lips. Very nice cigar, it's been very appealing to me. Uh, I would get this again, but on uh, $9 a stick, I don't think it'd be too frequently. But, uh, very decent. I find that they have uh, earth notes, cedar, little hops. Early wheat. It's got a little leather notes. I mean, and a light, light hint of spice. Like the end of it has got a little light hint of lajero, but not mm -hmm. too strong. And I never noticed any of those floral scents that I got off the dry puff. It's just been very, very, very woodsy. Um, I'm getting a lot of woodsy notes off the end here, almost uh, slightly bitter. Uh, woodsy notes. That could be I'm over puffing too, but uh, it wants to be over puffed because I'm starting a tunnel here in the end, but uh, and I'm trying to keep that from happening. Uh, construction on this cigar is uh, flawless. It burns on a razor. Mm -hmm. I had four, uh, three small fixes and a tunnel. But once it got all fixed, it was just perfect. It's you know. pretty much wanted to be uh, perfect. It's funny that you say that it's burnt on a rail, and then you say the two small fixes in a tunnel or whatever, and it's like, that doesn't sound <laughs> like it burnt perfect. <laughs> Blizzard, no. <laughs> Anyways, um... Bad dog! With that Lay down! Uh, with that said, you know, I... I, just, I Bad I, dog! I, Lay down! Stop that reading. Anyways, uh, I just give my recommendation on this, and, uh, you know, say go ahead and give the stool ox a try if uh, you never have. I agree completely. This cigar is something I would never have picked up if it wasn't for uh, Aaron. And uh, just so you guys know, um, when it comes to uh, other brands, I've never, I've been looking at the Placeras for a uh -huh. while, and. Uh, Aaron chose the Carinos for me. Because uh, the, they were in a Scura. And it wasn't just about that being that. It's a brand I never even heard of. So well, we I tried to try, to try things, uh, new things and stuff that, you know, is in the budget. And so, so um, with all that no Blizzard. With all that said, I'd say, uh, you know, add and subscribe, leave questions, comments, feedback, suggestions, and... Uh, if you smoked one of these and you agree or disagree, please let us know and just try to keep it nice is all we ask. And enjoy, enjoy every, every puff. puff.